and he produced a contract and he took his finger and slashed her finger and had her sign it in her blood. And then he touched the contract and it burst into flames and the ashes fell on the floor. So Robert Johnson is there at the Delta in Mississippi. He wants to be the best blues guitarist ever. And he sells his soul to the devil. At least that's what some album executive said decades later. Mm -hmm. He can't really sell his soul. Mm -hmm. So there, instead, it's just the, the person inviting the devil in to, yes. to their body. Yep. Okay. The, yeah, when you make a deal with the devil, it's an invitation. And, and he takes the invitation very seriously. He comes right in. Um, one of the worst cases I've ever heard was from uh, the excess of New York City back about 15 years ago. Uh, he was telling me, a, well, it would have been longer than that, maybe 20, 25. Um, there was a woman, a young girl at Juilliard, but violinist. And she was about to graduate. She was brilliantly talented, but all of her friends were getting job offers and she had none. And her friends remember always hearing her say the words, I would do anything to be famous. Well, guess who's listening? Your angel's listening, but also there's other things in the room. And it wasn't long after that that she uh, went to bed one night, had a dream. And she said in the dream was the most beautiful man she'd ever seen naked. Another sign calling card of the devil. Uh, and he said, do you really want fame and power? And she said, I do. And he produced a contract and he took his finger and slashed her finger and had her sign it in her blood. And then he touched the contract and it burst into flames and the ashes fell on the floor. So pretty easy to understand what happened, right? You don't need an advanced literary. Right. So when you wake up from that dream and you remember it, you might take a pause and be like, I don't think that was a good thing. But what's worse is her finger was cut and the ashes were next to the bed. So she still doesn't say anything. Not to be the devil's advocate, but I guess to be the devil's advocate. May, could this girl just have been nuts making it up? Just... Uh... Invented. She could have been. She could have, yeah. But you, you have to hear the whole story. Okay. So within a couple of weeks, she signs this multinational tour, makes a ton of money, becomes very popular and famous, go on this circuit. And within a few years, she gets involved with drugs, goes to needles, gets HIV. Now she's dying in a New York hospital. And this whole thing comes back to how this started. And she calls her Filipino mother and tells her the story. And mommy calls the chancery, hysterical. I need an exorcist right away for my daughter. So Jim is the exorcist. He shows up, and they tell him the whole story from the dream forward. And he says, okay, well, that's not good. You signed a blood covenant with the devil. So I'm going to need you to break that with the blood covenant. So you're going to write out the whole creed, and then you're going to sign it in your blood. Well, the doctor's like, she has AIDS. She's not signing anything in blood. Not going to happen. And he says, well, then you need to step out of the room because she needs to do this. And she did do it. And she signed the contract, the, the creed. And um, within a few seconds. The, the creed, for those who don't know, is I believe in God, the Father it's Almighty. What we believe is as our faith. Yes. Yeah. The whole faith in a neat little package. And <clears throat> she signs it. And she convulses and flatlines and <clears throat> dies. So now the doctor comes back, and he's really upset. The mother is out of her mind. They're all blaming the priest. Hysteria goes on for about 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden she jumps up off the table. <gasps> She's back. Oh. And they test her. No HIV, no AIDS. She's completely healed. <laughs> and so she then committed for the rest of her life to only do music that would honor God and to tell people about the reality of the devil and not to make deals with them. What's so crazy about the story is there are so many stories that are, I had not heard that, that story. I don't, I'm trying to think even if I, reading some of, you know, your writing, and re, but wow. E e hearing that, I'm struck. But then I think, well, there are all these miracles that have happened throughout history. And then what hits me is, how do people not believe in the face of all of this? All, e even, I was just at a conference on signs and wonders. And so I was thinking of all these 
little coincidences, these improbable, perhaps naturally impossible things that everybody has experienced at some point in his or her life. Yeah. And when they strike you, you're, you're so hit by them. And then five seconds later, you just go on with your life and you, it's as though they never happened. Yeah. So then I'm actually less surprised that people <laughs> could hear a story like that and, and not believe. I think a third of the people, if you picked up a mountain and moved it over there, a third of the people will believe right away. A third of the people will say it never happened. It was always over there. Yeah. And a third of them will be confused. And I think that's just the way human <laughs> nature pans out. I've been pretty blessed in my life. I've seen so many miracles. I mean, so many that I expect them now. I used to be a contemplative hermit, just pray in the woods with a group of hermits for the most of the day. <clears throat> and in, when during that time, the Lord one day said to me, he said, the days are fast approaching when the extraordinary will seem ordinary. The extraordinary will seem ordinary, meaning like the miraculous will be so prevalent hmm. for what I'm going to do that it will start to seem ordinary. But don't ever take it ordinary because it's all grace and you have to always acknowledge that this is a great gift. And um, there are just so many. I mean, even the smallest little things. Like there's a, a nun I'm friends with in Medjugorje, this place in Bosnia. She, a beautiful community called the Community of the Beatitudes. I think they have a chapter in Denver. And they were in charge of providing dessert for an orphanage. with like 250 kids coming for a barbecue picnic thing. And the nuns were doing the dessert. And so this one nun she put in charge of the dessert got a sample pack of like 12 pudding cups. Said, will this be okay? And she says, oh, yes, wonderful. Make sure we have enough. And the nun who was purchasing them got the day wrong. And she thought the barbecue was going to be the following day. And they hadn't arrived.